Hello everyone, this video is going to go over how to use Alpert's correlation to determine the temperature and velocity inside of a ceiling jet at ceiling level some distance away from the center line of a fire. So let's say we have a room, kind of a standard compartment with a fire somewhere in the middle, not, not particularly close to the edge uh, of it or any corners, and we're going to assume that we have an infinitely large flat ceiling. And if we have a fire that's, say, 250 kilowatts in size, an ambient gas temperature of 298 Kelvin, and we want to know the, the temperature and velocity at a point that is 2 meters from the center line of the fire, and the ceiling is 3 meters away from the base of the fire. And this, this information can be important if you want to calculate the activation time of of let's say a sprinkler or a smoke detector or something or a heat detector or something like that. Um, so what we can first thing we need to do is calculate an R over H value. I've written out part of this uh, this analysis already to save time in the video, but the R over H value will tell you which set of, of Alpert's correlations equations to use. So in this case, we want to use two over three, which is equal to 0 0.667 approximately, and that's greater than both 0 0.15 and 0 0.18. So you can find Alpert's correlations in the SFP Handbook 4th Edition, page 2-22, equations 2 through 5, and that's section 2, chapter 2, and in my experience, the, the as the editions change in the SFP Handbook, the page numbers may change, but the section and chapter numbers seem to stay relatively the same. So to find the temperature, and so with these both being greater than, or this value being greater than both 0 0.15 and 0 0.18, we're going to use this equation uh, to find the temperature and this equation to find the velocity. In the velocity equation, this in the third version of the SFP handbook, this, this number was 0 0.195, so I assume the new version is correct. So we can find temperature is equal to ambient temperature, 298, plus 5.35. Once again, this is an empirical constant, so it's important that we use the right units. If you're going to use different units other than kilowatts and meters for the heat release rate and the radius, or, yeah, the radius, you can do that, but you'll need a different empirical constant divided by 3. I find it difficult to write and talk at the same time. And uh, at least with the pen setup I'm using here. And so that's a temperature of 342.8 Kelvin. And so we want to think about if this is a reasonable temperature. And so we know that a 250 kilowatt fire isn't particularly huge, but it's not particularly small either. And three meters above it and two meters from its center line is is not particularly far away but not particularly too close either so this isn't hot enough to let's say boil water but it is it is relatively warm so to calculate the velocity we would use this equation v is equal to 0 0.197 times 250 to the one-third times our height to the one-half and our radius to the five-sixth power. So our velocity would equal 1.19 meters per second based on the units we're using here. And so once again you want to think about is this reasonable and uh, one close to one meter per second of a buoyancy con buoyancy induced velocity is pretty reasonable in in the literature that I've read so uh, as you get more experience you can make those determinations as well I hope you found this video useful and you have a good day